Hi, window watchers. You can see what's up here next to the bulletin board today. Some teeth. And that's what we're going to talk about. You know, everybody has teeth, don't they? But you know, there's not very many people that know very much about their teeth or do a very good job in keeping their teeth clean. So that's what we're going to talk about today, the different kinds of teeth that we have, the different things that they're used for, and how we can keep our teeth clean, the right way to brush our teeth and why we should keep them clean. Well, right over here I have a picture of a tooth. Now, there are two main parts to a tooth. You can see that this top part right here is called the crown. Now this is the part of the tooth that we see when you open up your mouth and look into the mirror. This is the white enamel part of the tooth. And the bottom part, the part that we can't see, that goes down through the gum and into its casing in the bone is called the root. Now we can look at a tooth that's uh, a picture of a tooth and it looks like the tooth has been cut in half so that we can see the different parts of this tooth. This white part right up here is the enamel. That's the hard glistening substance that covers the crown. That's the white part that we see when we open our mouth and when somebody talks we can see the enamel when they smile. And this dark line that runs all around the root is called the cementum. Now this is a bone-like substance that covers the root of the tooth. And then the gray part on the inside here is the dentine. This is the body of the tooth. It make, runs right up here into the crown and all the way down into the roots. And this is the main part of the tooth. And then the dark part here in the center with the little specks in it is called the pulp of the tooth. And through the pulp, or this, this is the center of the tooth, and through the pulp, the blood vessels run and the nerves run in there. The blood comes right up here, carrying food to the tooth and carrying away some of the waste. So that's what a tooth looks like if we would take it apart and take a good look at it. Now then I have some, a set of teeth right here that I want you to look at. Here's the lower part and here's the top part. Now I'll put them together so you can see what it looks like. These are teeth. And you've had teeth like these and I've had teeth like these. But these aren't the teeth that I have now. These are baby teeth. They're called deciduous teeth. You know, you think about it. Have you ever heard of anything else that's been called deciduous something? Well, think. Have you ever heard of deciduous trees? Those are trees that lose their leaves in the fall and get new ones in the spring. The word deciduous means the losing of something after it's reached its maturity. And that's just what the trees do in the fall after the leaves have reached their maturity, their final growing point. They drop off, don't they? Well, these baby teeth, after they've reached their maturity, they fall out too. Remember, about five, six, seven years old, we start losing. Sometimes two teeth at a time, but most of the time, one tooth at a time starts falling out, and that's what's supposed to happen. Now, ordinarily, a person has 32 teeth, except in this baby uh, set of teeth here, and there are only 20 baby teeth. That's all that comes in. And look, See the spaces between the baby teeth down here? There's a lot of room in there, isn't there? That's because there are only 20 of them. You know, it's very important to brush baby teeth and take good care of baby teeth, too, because they're paving the way for the permanent teeth that come in later. Let's just say, for instance, that maybe this person didn't take good care of his teeth, and decay set in, and it was very harmful to the person's health. So maybe this tooth right here, we had they had to pull, a dentist had to pull. Well, then there'd be a hole there, wouldn't there? Just a hole right there. Well, teeth are just like people. If you have more room to move around in, you move around. And since this hole is going to be right here, that's just what might happen to the teeth. They might just decide to move around. This one over here might move in and close up that hole. And then where would the permanent tooth, which is right down here in the gum where you can't see it, where would it go when it got ready to come in? Well, it would either have to come out in front, it would push up between the, in the smaller hole that was left there and crowd all the teeth and make them crooked, or maybe it would even come up back here in the back side, and that wouldn't be very good at all, would it? So it's very important to take care of our baby teeth, too. Now let's look at some teeth, some more teeth. Now these are permanent teeth right here. See, upper teeth and the lower teeth, and they fit together just like yours and mine. 
and the lowers are just the same as the uppers, except in the, the difference in shape. But you could see that by just looking in a mirror and looking at the different shapes. But let's talk about the teeth and the different names that they have and the different uses for the teeth. Right here in front, these two large teeth, the largest teeth that we have right on the upper teeth. You can put your finger on them if you want to. The large teeth, they're called the central incisors. Now to incise, the word incise means cut. And that's just exactly what these two teeth do. They, they help us to cut our food. Like if we were biting into an apple, why we would need uh, something sharp, like these two teeth here, to bite into the apple. It would be rather hard to bite into an apple with these back teeth, wouldn't it? So that's what these teeth are for. And I have a picture over here of an animal that makes very good use of his central incisors. And this is a horse. And beside the horse, in the back, you can see a skeleton, or the skull of the horse, with his two front incisors that are white. Now a horse has very large front central incisors so that he uh, can cut his food and straw and hay and, and bite it off much, much easier. And a central incisor has one root. Now the tooth that we first looked at had three roots on it, if you remember. And that was um, a molar. Molars have three or four roots on them. But this incisor tooth has just one root. Now then, there's uh, the next two teeth on either side of the front teeth, which are these two right here, are called lateral incisors. And they aid in cutting the food, too. They're not quite as large, you see, as the two front middle incisors, but they have the same purpose. They help us to cut into this apple or ear of corn or whatever it is that we're eating. And if you remember, when you didn't have one of these teeth, when your baby central incisor came out, it was kind of hard to eat an apple and chew on an ear of corn, wasn't it? Well, these lateral incisors here, there's an animal called a zebra. Well, you know what a zebra is. And here's a picture of a zebra and a picture of the zebra's skull showing the lateral incisors. Now, the zebra makes very good use of these lateral incisors, and they're a little bit larger than the horse's lateral incisors, and it helps him to cut his food and, and um, break it off so that he can get it into his mouth and chew with the back part of his teeth. Now, he has more teeth, too, and so does the horse, of course. They're back here, but he uses his incisors to bite off the food, and then he puts it in the back part of his mouth and chews it up. Well, then on the other side of the lateral incisor, we have a tooth that's called a cuspid. The cuspid. We have, of course, one on each side, but we'll just look at this one right here. Now, the word cusp, see, it's part of the word cuspid, isn't it? It means one point, and that's what this tooth has, one point. If you feel in your own mouth, you can feel that this tooth right here, which is the cor forms the corners of your mouth, comes to a point. And now there's an animal, if you think hard, what animal has oversized, really, cuspids? Think you know what it would be? Well, a cat has them. Let's look at this picture over here. It's a picture of a tiger. And this tiger has particularly overgrown cuspids. And the cuspids, uh, help tear food. Now that's why this, it's, they're so important to this tiger because this tiger eats meat and a lot of other animals and, and so that he can get it back in the back of his mouth and chew it up, he has to tear it off. So you can see these cuspids hanging down there just almost like fangs and that helps him to tear his food. Sometimes these cuspids are called eye teeth. And I don't really know why that is. I think a long time ago people thought that the roots of the eye teeth went way up and somehow hooked onto the eyeball. But that really isn't true. But we still refer to them sometimes as eye teeth. Well, then we come to the next two teeth. After the cuspid here, or the eye tooth, the next two are called bicuspids. Now, remember we said that cusp meant one point. Well, bicuspid means two points. You know, a bicycle means two wheels. So a bicuspid has two points. And there are two points. Can you see them there? There's one, and there's the other one. That's what they are. There's two points on them there. And the bicuspid has either one or two roots. And they help to tear some food, but they work mostly in crushing the food up, grinding it up. And a dog has very good bicuspids. I have a picture of a dog over here with the skull it's showing, too. And the bicuspids and the skull are painted white, so that you can see right where they are. And the dog has his cuspids, too, to help tear off the food. But after he tears it off, then the, cusp the bicuspids help him to 
crush the food so that he can chew it all up and then swallow it. Well, we have three teeth left, and they are the first molar and the second molar and the third molar. And an elephant uses these teeth. He has great big molars, and he uses them to grind his food. And you know how strong an elephant is. Well, he has to have strong teeth, too, especially for chewing up peanuts because they're pretty hard to chew on, aren't they? Especially when the elephant eats the shell and everything else. Well, we have three of these. There are only two of them here. The third one should go right here, but I think maybe on this uh, set of teeth, maybe it's been pulled. The third molar is sometimes called the wisdom tooth. Sometimes we don't even have wisdom teeth. But right now, while we're looking at the teeth, let's talk about how we should brush them. Now, I'm going to set this set of teeth away, right, set them over the side, and take the first set that we had when we opened up on the bulletin board. And I'm going to show you how you should brush your teeth. You should brush your teeth, by the way, three times a day after every meal. Oh, you probably won't want to take a toothbrush to school if you eat your lunch at school. But then you should wash your mouth out real good after you eat with water. But now let's watch and see how you really should brush the teeth. And you see whether or not you brush your teeth this way. I wonder whether or not you do. Well, you lay the toothbrush right here along the side of your teeth so that the bristles are pointing the same way that the tooth is, and then you turn it just slightly like that, and then just wiggle the toothbrush just a little bit. Now, you see, this loosens all the food particles that get in between the teeth. It loosens them all up. Now, some mistake that people make is by going like this, right across the side of their teeth. Well, that doesn't do any good. The food particles are still in between teeth like that, but just by wiggling the brush just a little bit here, that loosens up those food particles that are packed in there, and then move on to another spot, and finally until you work all the way around the upper teeth. And then you can go back, and with a movement like this, brushing down, you can brush away all those little food particles that you loosened up. Well, then we have to do the same thing to the inside, the underside of the teeth, and it's rather hard to wiggle the brush back there, so if you just brush down and out like this cleaning all the inside, too. Well, then, of course, food particles sometimes get stuck right down in here, especially with these bicuspids in the molars because they're so flat on top. So we can just take a toothbrush, loosen up the food particles that are in there, and loosen them up up here, and then brush all those food particles away, just like that. And we want to do, of course, the same thing to the lower teeth, rubbing them back and forth like this, all the way around, and then brushing up like that. Now this massages the gums too, and that's another thing that's very important because, because your gums are just as important as your teeth are. Sometimes if you don't keep um, rubbing your gums, something might happen to them. It would be just as bad as happening to your teeth. So we want to keep the decay from getting into our mouths, don't we? And if you don't want to keep them, well that's one reason. Another thing is to just have clean teeth and a good looking smile. Go look in the mirror and see how your teeth look. Goodbye now.